Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to EOS Challenge Series number 15 Grand Finals with SK Gaming and TCM Gaming. This is the second game of the Best of Five series. I am Pulse, and I'm joined by Messers. Hey, Pulse, hey, viewers, how is it going? I'm hoping, though, from TCM's point of view, that they are going to come up with some new strats. They're going to come up with something a bit different. They are the first pick this time around, Pulse, so they can potentially first pick the Shivana themselves this time or ban it away. Thus far, all I can see, though, is Renekton and Cassidy being taken away. I think the biggest factor as to why TCM lost that game was not only because Volibear fed the red buff to Sona level um, level 3, but their jungler was very risky. Um, Volibear has to get ahead early to be relevant when you get to mid-game. Shivana really punishes mistakes. If you make a mistake, then she'll just get so far ahead of you in jungle that you can never trade off against her. No matter if you get there first, Shivana counter ganks, she kills you. So, they can't afford to let that happen again. They have to have someone with maybe more utility and someone who's more reliable if, um, if if you get into mid late game. So I'd like to see something like a Lee Sin, I know it was banned out last time, or maybe even just something solid like a Jarvan. But Volibear is too risky for them to say, we're gonna pick Volibear, pick anything you like against me. It doesn't work like that. Yeah, I mean, it, it worked against Dig UK, um, but that, I feel that was mainly down to the fact that the lane switch up came in about, about and then the second game, uh, TCM just outclassed Dignitas UK in every single way. And actually, the Shivana ban's going to come from SK Gaming, so really respecting that champion. Zed's also been banned, which is a direct uh, ban against Jezz's, who in game number one played really exceptionally well in that poll. So definitely understandable bans coming out here. Jack's the first lock in from TCM. Yeah, Jax is a very solid pickup. Um, you can just you can go one versus two, he'll do okay. You can go one versus one, he'll also do okay. And um, the fact that Shivana has has been banned out means they don't need to prioritize their jungler, which is fine. I would have said if uh, Shivana had not been banned out, they would have needed to either prioritize Shivana or prioritize something else. Uh, Elise has also been banned out, so those big power junglers have been taken away. Those kind of more controly types, and Jax will be fine. I mean, there's not many matchups in which Jax completely loses. Um, and he can always come back later, like he itemizes very effectively. Yeah, and we were talking in the break, Pulse, and, and you were saying um, that you think SK Gaming and TCM are, are very different teams in the way that they approach the game, that you think TCM are more around objective control and slip pushing more than out and out 5 versus 5 team fights and Jax definitely fits that bill because he is an extremely good split pusher he's a good duelist so you, you can't necessarily 1 versus 1 him late game and that will draw out 2 or 3 players to top allowing the rest of TCM to push down mid or bot whatever the case may be so I think this character fits their playstyle very well yeah, indeed. Now that they know the Jax is there, they might try to pick a more aggressive top laner to try and shut that down. Already they've picked up the Lee Sin, um, which already shows that they're going to go for the strong, high mobility composition that we've seen so far from SK's new lineup. And Nif has picked up a very solid champion of Zyra. Could be in support, could also be in the mid lane. I'd probably tend towards the uh, support, but they can easily swap that up. It's an ambiguous pick at the start of the picking order, so that can go anywhere they really want it to, to suit their playstyle. They are currently hovering over that being TCM, the Lucian could be very interesting. It could. Um, they could potentially go for Lucian Thresh. Apologies if they've already locked this in, guys. We are behind the stream right now. But it looks on my screen that they're going to go for the Thresh Caitlyn again. So they're going to rinse and repeat here, hope that it goes a tiny bit better. I would entirely expect to see Nif playing Zyra here in, at the support role because it is a character he plays a lot. And apart from just a couple mid laners that we've casted, it has pretty much 90% of the time been a bot lane ball, so that's where I'm expecting to see it go. Um, but they're going to be against Caitlyn Thrash, and again, potentially Candy Panda taking the vein against this. It'd be very interesting. Mm, they, they definitely could do that. It worked out last time, and uh, SK actually hovering over the volleyball. But yeah, Caitlyn Thrash has been picked up, again, as we said in the first champion select, a very just solid lane. It's very difficult to pick anything against that and say it's going to do well. Um, a longer range bot lane, something like a Lulu or a Zyra, which was banned out in the first game, could do definitely work against that. It makes it very difficult for Fresh to come in with the auto attack harass, but Caitlyn can su still do that herself. In fact, they are hovering over the vein. So... It could definitely work. I mean, last time it worked out because they um, the early game gank from Volibear didn't work out. But this time they could go with um, something like a Jarvan. So it wouldn't matter as much. So I'm curious on your thoughts here, Pulse. Olaf, well, what do you have to say about the Viking? Because it's been a long time since you've seen Olaf played at this tier, this caliber of, uh, of plays. That's, um, that's weird. 
I, I, yeah, I haven't seen an Ola for a year, maybe? Even after the remake messes, no one really picked up Ola. His changes are very interesting. Um, I still feel his damage is... I think his damage is low, but I haven't seen him played in competitive play, so I have no preconceived ideas going into this one. Olaf against Jax. Man, this brings me back to Season 2. Um, Jax does okay against Olaf. Um, Olaf does fairly well against Jax because he can just uh, reckless swing into his Counter-Strike and it's not going to matter. And he can just uh, Ragnarok his way through the stun as well. So in that sense, he does very well. But he also is very reliant on itemization. Yep, and it looks like the final pick uh, could very well be the Riven from SK Gaming. They're hovering over it right now on the stream that I am watching. Not too sure if that is going to be uh, the final lock-in. But what we can talk about here, Pulse, is the Jarvan getting locked in from TCM and the rest of their team. How do you feel that's going to fare? Because it's a bit of a... A pick and mix of compositions. They've got a bit of everything here. They've got the poke damage from Caitlyn, the hard engage from Jarvan, and the mid to close range uh, affair from Ari, who's just going to be darting around the sides trying to do as much damage as possible on Belgian Beast. Yeah, and he's like Jarvan is very solid um, pickup. Like he can he can fall behind early, and he'll still have that utility when we get into mid and late. This is a much more rounded team from TCM. It won't hurt them as much as the um, the early game loss from Volley Bears Dying did. So this time, we'll see what um, SK do to round up their lineup. But this will be a much closer game, even from picks and bans. Yeah, absolutely. So we are going to jump into the rift in about three minutes time as the delay ticks down here. Until then, we're going to go to a quick commercial break. When we join us, it'll be live for Game Over 2 between SK Gaming and TCM. Out here walking all alone When I look at my reflection I need you to guide me home Rain is pouring down the rooftop Secrets all around Surrounding bright lights sparkle in the night, move so fast it's hypnotized. 
Welcome back, ladies and gents, to Ghost TV's live coverage of the US Challenger Series number 15. It is Grand Finals Day in game number two between TCM and SK Gaming. Both teams looking to aggressively push the envelope right from the get-go as well, Paul. So it's going to be interesting. There is a ward down here from SK Gaming, so they could be looking to jump in and make some plays happen. Yep, they do in, in fact have the queen of level 1 team fights. that is Zyra. So, if they catch them in a bad position, especially in the jungle, that could be a strong... Uh, not a strong force, because he's not level 6. Grasping roots onto two free players, and that would hurt TCM massively. Looks like they might be gearing up for this level 1. They've shown themselves, though. They have, and it's, it's really a, a flirtatious affair now. Who makes that first move? Do either of these teams want it? Doesn't look likely, as SK Gaming are backing away. Maybe Barney D can land a long-range death sentence they can follow up. Nope, not going to try. Both teams just back on off. Oh, Freddy. Had Freddy not shown himself out of that brush, he just kind of got clipped by the pathfinding as he tried to get into the brush himself. Had that not happened, they could have easily just opened up onto them and probably picked up one to two kills. So... That will not happen. Both the teams rotate back into their own jungles, but the vision has been uh, has been put down. So they'll realise that TCM will be starting up in their blue buff. Let's have a look here. There were seven wards planted in that first few <laughs> moments. So, so much vision of around that top area of the river. So uh, it's going to be blue buff started from SK Gaming and the blue started from TCM as well. Are we going to have any lane switch ups? Nope. Dual lane's going to bot and top lane is going top. Yeah, indeed, Zara will be coming back in. So we've got the conventional duo lane versus duo lane and all the solo lanes up against each other. So in the bot lane, Lucian and Zyra should be able to aggress onto them fairly easily. They've got decent poke and their trading potential is very strong, especially with Zyra and Lucian. And it's easier for them to open up on them as well. They're not short range. They can easily get onto either Matraco or Barney D. And Barney D at the same time will find it hard to even poke Lucian as grassing roots will be a great deterrent as we see there. There's going to be a lot of trading power, though, from SK if they can get close enough. And as you said before in the past pulse, that you know if Zyra lands the Grasping Roots into Stranglethorns after level 6, it's a great segue for Candy Panda to jump in with Lucian and just mow them down with the culling. They've not hit level 2 yet, though, so TCM are slightly stronger at this point in time. Just harassing Nif away with the long range, that is Caitlyn. So Matroco doing his work right now, but... It's going to be pretty much stalemate for the time being. I think it's going to come down to those junglers. Speaking of which, Van Skeren's making a move to top. Yeah, it looks like both of these junglers are going to find themselves up here. Wards have not actually revealed these players, but the fact that Olaf is pushing up so hard means that he won't, in fact, go for this. This could be a great opportunity for Nuru Terador. Got to be careful of the large minion stack. Might wait for that to kind of even itself out. But Olaf doesn't have many tools of getting out of these early game ganks. Yep, that is true, and has gone for Flash. Some Olafs will go for Ghost, it completely depends on the player in question, but Freddy with the Flash is going to be able to jump out quickly, but as soon as that's down, it's just been burnt instantly actually from Freddy122. So with that being down, I think Neroterador is going to be licking his lips and really looking to pressure and harass the top lane because there is no way for Olaf to escape now. 
Yeah, that was a smart flash. He needed to do that. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Nuru Terador just flag and drag into that brush next to the lane and then look for the gank. But I think Olaf realizes, well, the jungle is probably going to be sticking around. There's no reason for him not to. Middle is not going to have a gank happening there anytime soon. LeBlanc finds it even at early levels can get out of ganks very easily. Flash distortion is up. And bot lane, there's, well, he can't get, that, uh, get down there in time. He's actually still waiting in the top lane, even with the knowledge that Olaf has gone back. So Nuru Terador looking to shut down Olaf early. Yep, Svenskeren is going to be going to bot lane though, so let's see which, if any, of these ganks are successful. Freddy122 is getting back, to, pushed back towards his own tower though, he's being pretty aggressive on JWoww, so he needs to be careful. Bot lane though, they're going to be making plays, Bonnie D has been caught, going to be flashing away, Svenskeren jumping in the meantime, can they secure this kill? Safeguarding out, will be death sentencing in the Candy Panda, who's forced to both barrier and flash at a first blood. It's going to be Zyra picking up the kill onto Thrash. Yeah, great damage jungling even underneath that turret and the top lane. What comes out? Nero Terrador has been shown. And that's a long time to commit into the top lane. In fact, he took an entire level off JWoww. So even the fact that Freddy had to recall will even itself out. And that ward has already paid for itself. It certainly has. Matroko oh, is going to have the, the sanctuary of this tower to sit behind and get some free farm, however. But top lane, Freddy122 pushing back JWoww. And just going back onto the thing I mentioned before about summoner choice here for Freddy122, going for Flash instead of Ghost. I think that's purely down here, Pulse, to the fact he's against Jarvan the Fourth. Because even with Ragnarok up, you're just going to be running circles around in that cataclysm. Yeah, indeed. It's kind of the same thing with Nasus. A lot of Nasus players in the top lane still prefer the Flash anyway because you can make reactive plays, whereas Ghost is okay, but generally you can catch up to your target anyway because of your inbuilt abilities. Ragnarok means you're immune to CC, so you can go for Ghost, but Flash has way more utility than Ghost if you play it right anyway. And Jax is having a really hard time against Olaf, and this is kind of how it went in Season 2 as well. Even with the change, uh, changes to Olaf, his, his kit is basically mechanically the same. Yeah, he does have a good time against Jax, as you mentioned previously, with the Reckless Swing, especially if he just builds a lot of health early on, which is pretty much what he's gone for. He's gone for Doran's Shield and Doran's Blade, so he's going to be getting 180 health collectively from those two items, and you can see he's just bossing back back JWoww. He has his level 6, he's got his Ragnarok available, whereas JWoww does not have his Grandmaster's Might just yet. So, again, Freddy122 playing this lane very well. He's just pushing away Jax, really bullying him. Yeah, so we haven't even touched on the mid lane here, Metas, as uh, Freddy trades off well in the top lane. But uh, LeBlanc, before her changes, um, did very well against Ari. I don't think anything has really changed. Ari finds it very difficult to do anything to LeBlanc. She has a lot of tools to juke around her skill shots. Um, Charm is almost never going to hit, and if it does, then yes, she can take down Ar um, she can take down LeBlanc. But apart from that, in every other scenario that happens in mid lane, she's just going to combo Ari down, and she doesn't have the range to get around that. She silences her during the Spirit Rush, so she uh, Ari can never really aggress onto... LeBlanc, unless she hits her with Charm, which should never happen anyway. So, inherently, as soon as Jezus hits level 6, in fact, he's gone back, picked up some items and started to itemize, this is not looking good for Belgian Beast. Like, he's going to have to essentially just wait at his turret, because at any point in time, LeBlanc can probably 100-0 him. Mm, definitely the case, especially as now has hit the level 6, so that is going to be a Mimic available for some use and I have seen Jez's running LeBlanc in the past especially for Tricked Esport a team that he was back in a few months ago he's extremely strong on this champion as well Paul so it's not just the case that in the right hands LeBlanc is a very strong champion but you've got Jez's on one of his comfortable characters this could get messy very quickly from Belgian Beast's perspective yeah especially if Lee Sin looks for the gank like as soon as um Ari is in range for Jez's abilities, you can keep him silenced for like two to four seconds, and that will completely shut down an Ari, and all she can do is just walk back to turret, can't even flash away from that. So Lee Sin doesn't even need to go into the mid lane, he could even just try and make this top lane go uh, even better than it is currently. Freddy doesn't really re um, react well to ganks, especially as Olaf, he doesn't have CC to offer apart from the soft CC from Undertow. Um, so in fact, Lee Sin's just really been farming his jungle, he's got not, not that many objectives to fight over. Mm, it, it's going to be quite curious for me as to who's going to pick up this first tower as well because looking across the board, I'm just seeing if any of these towers is taking much punishment. No. So all the towers are by and large completely healthy. Dragon's not going to be a factor for a little while longer. Potentially a pick will transition into a dragon, but it's going to be a farming frenzy for the foreseeable future here, Pulse, because there are no clear-cut objectives uh, available for either team. 
Yeah, I think where we're going to see the most action will probably be in the mid lane or even bot lane. Um, as soon as they start hitting level 6, in fact, both of these teams have, um, SK have better trading potential, but at the same time, if a hook lands onto Nif, they could probably nuke him down before he can get the Strangle Thorns off, and it looks like that's what they're heading for. Dragon is now an objective that they could fight over. JWAL is in top lane, and New Tyrodor is looking to assist with the gang. He is coming in here. Ragnarok has been popped off, though, so Freddy uses that ultimate just to get back from... Uh from Harm's Way, courtesy of Naratorador and Jaywell. Meanwhile, at bot lane, Svenskeren again is just going to be responding in kind, jumping past the tower, flayed in midair from Barney D. Reminiscence from Libic when we cast to meet your makers. Actually, going to be going in deep here. The box has been used. Death Sentence comes out, will not be landing as Svenskeren safeguards away again. But they're pushing the lane backwards. They could do a lot of damage to this tower. Yeah, alarm bells have started to be rung as Ari comes into the bot lane. However, LeBanc was reacting, didn't choose to go all the way though. And we might see someone get caught out in rotation. In fact, we're going to see the dragon attempt coming from SK. Um, this is interesting. I mean, Jarvan's actually going to the top lane, so there's nothing to really fear. Caitlyn can maybe harass them over the wall, but this should be an easy objective for SK. Yep, and that definitely answers the question I had about objectives here. Freddy, 122 has been aggressed on again as Dragon goes down. Can they even this one up? Looks likely as Olaf will finally fall down. Now, Terrador's flashing up red, but he'll be just fine. The Ignite's nowhere near enough damage. But I think Freddy, 122 will be by and large quite happy with that trade. His life for Dragon, although this top tower is pretty vulnerable and should be going down. Yeah, I don't think anyone can react in time, so that will be the tower and the kill for Dragon, which arguably is slightly better, but they'll have uh, SK will have a timer on that, and they should be able to rotate into that a lot smoother than TCM can. But either way, this game is exceptionally close metas, and hasn't snowballed as much as any of the games we've seen previously from either of these teams. Dragonforms comes up in the bot lane. It does. I think that was more defensive, though, because Candy Panda was taking a lot of damage from Atroco. Bonnie D actually flashing out of the culling there. So better safe than sorry from his point of view and it will keep him alive. So had to have worked out for him. Yeah, I mean, that was interesting considering Stranglefonts had already been used. Had it not been, then I could have seen the flash from Barney. Um, but the fact that they've seen him be so defensive, he might be able to chain this into a gank. But in fact, they're just going to recall, so nothing really happens. I think that was an unnecessary flash as, as much as it was an unnecessary uh, Stranglefonts. But the fact that both of these supports are being so twitchy, they're very aware that one slip up could result in the kill. Yeah, and I think that also maybe goes to show how much these teams respect one another as well, Pulse. Yeah. That they, they're very aware that those missteps can quickly snowball into a, a game-breaking advantage for the opposite team. So if SK Gaming had potentially you know, lost Candy Panda or indeed Nif at bot lane, it could have gone into a free tower. It could have gone into sort of more items from a truck when he recalls. And that's the reason, as you say, they're, they're twitching a tiny bit. You can't really blame them, though. This is a grand finale. Yeah, absolutely. SK probably have the stronger mid game. Um, in, when it comes to team fights, TCM are going to be a little bit stronger. But when it comes to like rotations between lanes and all the rest of it, they've definitely come out ahead. New Terrador looking for the counter gang. Oh, wow. Jarvan's doing a lot more damage than I think Jessis was expecting. Ignite has gone down. Will be enough damage. And Svenskeren was not able to safeguard in time. Don't think it would have been enough shield anyway. But that will be Jessis falling to another gank from Nara Terrador. Yes, indeed, and that has put them even further ahead when it comes to the chances of trading off against them. Swiss Garen moves back into his own jungle, doesn't really want to pick a fight with Lee. He's probably still be able to, uh, going to be able to take him out in a one versus one trade. Uh, I would, yeah, as I was talking about before metas, I think that TCM are definitely stronger when it comes into a 5 on 5 brawl. But SK, when they come to these lane rotations in this small skirmishing team fight, they're going to be a lot stronger. And Freddy's still training off against Jax. But it looks like Jax is heading out ahead here, even in these small poke um, trade situations. And that's scary for Olaf. Like, falling behind Jax is really, really nasty because at any stage in the game now, he'll itemize better. He'll always be ahead and he'll always be able to out-trade him. Yeah, as soon as items like Triforce, Blade of the Rune King, potentially a Randuin's Omen come into effect, Jax is going to be unstoppable. It's going to be very difficult for Freddy122, throws in the Undertow, gets some vision of Jarvan, and uh, should be backing away here as the gank comes in, actually flashing with the Cataclysm as well. Freddy122's been caught out of position here. He doesn't have his flash available. They're going to be jumping on top of him. He's got the Ragnarok up. Is it going to be enough to keep him alive? The tower is chunky down, JWoww. Yes, it will be enough to take him out. And JWoww should be able to escape. That being said, though, Svenskeren is here around the sides. Has the Dragon's Rage available? Is he going to be able to pick up this kill? No, he's not. As the Leap Strike goes back onto his jungler. Yeah, Nero Terrador having a much better game this time around. And 
I much prefer it over the Volley Bear, honestly. Had even the early game gone badly for Jovan, he still would have been able to catch up. He still offers utility, whereas the Bear kind of just has to walk towards them. And there's a lot of bad matchups in terms of gank situations that doesn't work out well for him. Like uh, against Ari, Charm comes in and then he, she just walks on out. Even in the top lane, um, Olaf could just walk away from Volley Bear, especially with Undertow. So this time round, Jovan is a much more solid pickup. I don't know if you caught that a bot lane, but Nif threw in an interesting strangle force. Did not connect. And with Candy Panda being uh, fairly vulnerable right now, I don't think they want to be pushing too far ahead because one death sentence will certainly live up to its name. So Candy Panda and Nif are playing a bit more safe right now. Candy Panda does have his barrier up and the flash, so it could look to outplay mechanically Mishoko. Very possible, especially with both these junglers coming down, reading each other like a buck. So, in a straight-up trade, the fact that Strangle Thorns is down, TCM will come out ahead. They don't have the Cataclysm, but, in fact, Nuriterador is just going to show himself. They want to make a power play onto this turret. Well, Svenskeren is also here, so 3 versus 3. With uh, Dragon up in about 1 minute 12, and they are going to be engaging on Matraco, who's taking the forefront of all the damage. Here comes Jezus from the side as well. They've picked up one, they picked up two. And just the jungler of Jarvan will be backing away. Two for zero exchange in SK's favor. They could be looking to push this tower as well. And there it is, the lane rotation so much better coming in from SK. And that's really what we were looking for, Metas. Dragon will be up in about a minute. They've got to uh, make sure that they don't overstay, but at the same time, they really need this turret. They need to bring an objective back. You're a terrible, um, batting away at Svenskeren, not really <laughs> deterring him that much. Uh, Svenskeren so doesn't seem to care a great deal, and is going to pick up the tower regardless. Dragon is now up in 35 seconds. That will be enough time for the dual lane of TCM to get back into contention at the bottom lane. Uh, but with Svenskeren recalling, with Naraterador taking double golems, it could be a little while longer before we see that Drake fight kicking off. Yeah, but the cooldowns come up very quickly after Dragon spawns. In fact, 10 seconds after that, uh, top lane's still trading it away. But Nif has stronger funds, and so will Svenskeren. They'll have all their cooldowns up, whereas TCM will not. Fresh's uh, box is still on another 90 second cooldown. Caitlyn's already burnt the barrier as well. And Candy Panda still has his flash over Matraco. So they could definitely go for a team fight. They have more cooldowns available to them. And there's no reason not to, honestly. They're edging ahead ever so slightly in these small skirmish situations. In a 5 on 5, yes, TCM can win, but not without their big playmaking ultimates. Well, they are going to be starting off the dragon here. Dark Passage comes down, gives some vision of the dragon area. So TCM know exactly what's going on. Jarvan and Belgian Beast coming around from the side while Matroko is going to be firing in the ace in the hole. Lands on, hips the Jezzes. They're not going to get the steal away as Svenskeren picks that one up for his team. Cataclysm back on. Now Terrador is not that tanky though. He's going to be falling in amongst all the action. Thus far it's a one for one trade but lots of players flashing up red. TCM going to pick up their second kill. Looking for their third kill. Double kill comes in from Svenskeren however. It's going to be evening this one up at a two for two. And somehow, someway, Svenskeren manages to live to fight for another day. Yeah, Candy Panda's still waiting in the brush, though. Gotta be so careful that Bonnie D doesn't land the hook. Ooh. So, so close to Candy Panda. Two for two trade, and the dragon picked up by SK. That was a lot tighter than I don't think any of us expected it to be, but either way, it was a fight that TCM had to go for, but SK realized the cooldowns that he had over them, and it worked out regardless. As, uh, Candy Panda, got, though, is gonna find it pretty hard to defend against this push. Yeah, some awesome mechanical plays from Skarin as well to keep himself alive. Candy Pan is trying his best to keep his tower alive for as long as possible. He has been successful so far, and he does have Sven Skarin and Nif coming back down. So the cavalry is joining him. This tower will be just fine. Yeah, I thought it was going to be harder than it was. Uh, I didn't realize Lucian's wave clear is actually extremely strong, mm -hmm. and he's already picked up the Triforce. So that's not going to happen. Five to five so far, and two towers to one. There's nothing really in the bot lane to keep SK there. They were just coming down to potentially counter an engagement onto Lucien. And also, Belgian Beast is sitting down here. LeBlanc's in the mid lane. They're going to realize that Belgian Beast is off the map. We could see some action kicking off here, but I'm still going to favor SK in these scenarios. Well, Candy Panda has Belgian Beast running after him. Ace in the hole comes out from Caitlyn. So Matroko just pushing back, and in the mid lane now, now Terrador has three players to contend with himself. So comes down to who is going to push quicker. Looks like in this position that SK Gaming are going to pick up the mid tower. Flag and drag in to now Terrador, who then flashes away. So that summoner spell has been used for naught because he's not going to keep that tower alive. <laughs> Yeah, again, good uh, lane rotations, and it's weird what TCM are trying. They're trying to beat them at their own game as Jets is flashing up red. Jukes all over the place. 
Yep, and that's what you get when you have an Ari against LeBlanc in mid. Here comes the second Spirit Rush from Belgian Beast. Can he be jumping in? Strangle Thorns, beautifully placed. Going to be knocking Jarvan up midway through the flag and drag. But JLR coming around from the side will be shackled from Jez's. Here comes Freddy122. Going to be taking down JWAR right now, as tanky as he is with the Counter Strike. Nowhere near enough. And they pick up the free kill. One for zero exchange. PCMs really just can't go for these type of engagements, they can't fight them when they're rotating from lane to lane, because SK will manoeuvre more quickly than they can, and in like 3 vs 3s, their champions are much better suited towards those scenarios. TCM need to make power plays, they need to try and go for big brawls, and make sure that they don't lose their suns and big cooldowns when they're rotating between these lanes, because they will start falling behind. They had a huge advantage early game metas, but they're playing these fights weirdly. They are, but I would also say that SK have a very difficult team to chase down Pulse because you've got the Undertow coming in from Olaf, Grasping Roots and Stranglethorns, hold that thought because Candy Panda has been caught a bot here from now Terrador, Cataclysm coming in, culling as he runs backwards with style and he will be able to escape after flashing away. But Summoner Spell has been popped from Candy Panda, one thing to take note in the upcoming fights. As I was going to say though, it's a difficult team to chase down Pulse, there's so many slow, so much CC and also Jez's on the LeBlanc can just constantly shackle you down and get himself out of dodge with all of the mobility that LeBlanc brings to the table. It's, it's a pretty brutal team to chase. It is, and that's why trying to fight them in lane rotations is a bad idea, because they'll fight them, and it's like, well, if this isn't working out for SK, disengage. All of these characters can disengage very effectively, maybe Olaf less than the others, but still Ragnarok, and as you mentioned, Undertow is a great um, piece of utility to get out of those nasty situations. Whereas if TCM force them into a fight, if they start going for the dragon um, first, which they didn't actually have the timer on, so that's something they need to control, or they force um, an objective like in the jungle, like a buff fight, then they'll be there first and then having SK react to that they'll they won't be able to fight that one That's the type of scenario they need to go for but they can't keep going between lanes and trying to fight them Because if it doesn't work out for SK as we said, they'll just disengage and they'll win anyway Yeah, and something else to mention that we actually did bring about in the champion selects that TCM or like to split push with JWoww. He's a very good duelist, he's picked jacks, he's constantly pushing top, so that's another thing for SK to keep in the back of their minds, that even though they are slightly ahead on gold, about 3.3k, it's even still on towers, it's even or thereabouts on kills, and JWoww can still push that top lane, he can still become that horrible monster to play against going into the later game. Uh, Candy Panda though has actually engaged super hard on Belgian Beast, is looking for this kill, he's going to get it with the culling, will it be at the cost of his own life? Yes it will, so one for one trade, now Barney D throws in the Dark Passage, here comes Jezzet from the backside, Shackles will be landing on Naraterador, look at the burst damage on one of the tankiest players, but it's going to be double kill for Naraterador, Spenskera comes in, what about that for a safeguard, out of the strangle thorns in time to negate all of the damage from JWoww, who jumps in with a counter strike, but it's not going to be in time, Ragnarok used from Freddy 1-2-2, two, two. he's going to be running away, nice grasping, Roots from Nif as well. Beautiful play all over from SK Gaming and Freddy wanted to actually flashing through the wall to stop that death sentence from landing. And this report we were saying fight doesn't work out, disengage, and they can do that so well. Two for two, that could have been a lot worse if they weren't running the type of composition they were running. TCM trying to make a pushing advantage, but you just can't against Nif and Freddy. They'll just clear this wave all day. And again, they just have to back off. So they pick up the two kills, but that's a two for two trade. And even though they were ahead in their health bars and indeed cooldowns, they can't make any advantage in terms of pushing. Yeah, and it comes down to what we said before that, you know, even if you do get kills, if you're not getting objectives, it's not the end of the world for the team that's just received the battering in the death chamber. So SK Gaming, you know, both teams got a, a couple of kills that neither of them are going to be picking up objectives, although Pulse Dragon has respawned, and I think it's going to be TCM jumping on this first. Indeed it will. RSK Gaming quick enough to get into contention here. They're lacking some of their cooldowns, and Dragon Rage is already up, but both of these teams are indeed lacking the cooldowns. They could definitely go for this team fight, but this is much better for TCM. This is the type of situation they want to find themselves in, but they're backing off from it. This is interesting. I would say that they would uh, react a lot better when they're instigating these fights. If SK is piling into them, then they have no retreat when TCM knocks them down. Um, Ace in the hole comes out, and uh, Nif takes a bit of damage there, but still, all 10 players around this area. JWoww 
Now, with the Triforce and the Bilgewater Cutlass, is getting towards that Brutal Jax. But in this team fight, who's going to come out ahead? Lots of damage on both teams, lots of disengage as well. Looks like Dragon has been started off from SK Gaming now as the burst comes in onto Naraterador. That's going to definitely hold him back from trying to steal away this dragon. So nice play coming out from Jez's. JWoww is now chasing after him. It's going to be a free dragon at the end of that for SK Gaming. And they're going to pull themselves back. Yeah, Jez's immediately broke their engage. The Dragon couldn't come in. What else do they have? They have Bonnie D's hook. Potentially, but that's not a solid engage. JWoww can't really engage either. He needs to come in after Jarvan, and he was already punished by LeBlanc. Actually, very low on the magic resist, only 79 at this stage. So that's all they needed. Jez has played that perfectly for SK Gaming. Certainly did. Has a lot of damage as well. I mean, looking at his scoreline, one for three, you, you wouldn't be completely out of territory to say, hmm, he must be pretty weak. That's not the case. Deathfire Grasp and Void Staff at 25 minutes, boss. That's going to hurt a lot. Yeah, I mean, this is not really the uh, farming score line you expect to see from a LeBlanc, but the fact that she was still zoning out Ari in the mid lane meant that she was going to have more farm anyway. It's kind of weird. Um, <laughs> LeBlanc isn't generally seen as the champion uh, who is very exceptionally good at farming, such as a Zara or even a Syndra mid lane, or even indeed Orianna, but it's worked out. So, 1 3 and 4 score line, but still offering a lot of utility and damage to these fights. I guess one of the the main things that could be hurting SK though, Pulse, is typically Lee Sin will scale off. Svenskeren is an exceptionally good Lee Sin, but Lee Sin late game is nowhere near the same level of presence as early game. Having five out of the eight kills on his team, I would say they'd much have preferred that to be on the likes of Candy Panda and also Jazz's. So he's taking up a lot of the gold that will end up scaling off towards late game. That's maybe one of the things that's a bit concerning to them right now, but they still have a very strong lineup. They still have a couple of players that are putting down serious damage now that Lucian's picked up his last Whisper as well. Yeah, I agree completely. Like, TCM will start finding it easier to go for teamfights as the game progresses, but SK win in so many of these scenarios, and right now they probably win on the 5 versus 5 fight as well. TCM seem unwilling to make the play and go for the 5v5 fight first, which it seems to be hurting them, honestly. I still feel if they're, in, if they're in a place first, then they should be able to beat SK as they trickle in. But they pick up the blue buff as they try and defend this out. Baron, I don't think SK will go for but they might be able to find someone out in transition once again. Now Terador coming in, Candy Panda gets the Cataclysm and Ace in the hole. Stranglethorns again, so good from Nif. Pushing back two or three players. Now Terador's gonna be falling to Candy Panda's hands. Death Sentence comes in, actually pushing back Candy Panda. But are they gonna be re-engaging afterwards? Yes, they are. Freddy 1-2-2 two, two with Ragnarok chasing everybody down. He's got his sights set on Belgian Beast who flashes away. Here comes Fenskeren from the side though, darting in with the Sonic Wave Resonating Strike just in time to get shut down. They've just picked up two kills. So aggression could prove to be SK Gaming's downfall. Jez is though, look at this position. Is he gonna try some trickery? Jumping through the wall and getting that kill. No, he's not. He's actually going to be jumping the other side and going back to spawn. Yeah, SK played that um, a little too aggressively. They were all basically on uh, maybe 10% HP as they continued the chase, and they were uh, relying on the fact that TCM don't want to go for these engagements and would just continue backing off to the town. Matroko turned this one around and picked up a kill in return. But even so, SK is still ahead, and they're winning in every time TCM tried to aggress onto them. They just win. So... TCM need to be in the in the right place first and have SK react to them. We say it time and time again, Metas, but it remains true. It does, and, and that's a, a key integral part of League of Legends. It's the execution. It's how SK Gaming, I feel, you know, at the start of that fight, it was going well for them, but it was a bit sketchy at the, the later stages of that engage pulse because they chased down. Svenskeren went in super deep. It was nice mechanical play, but he got killed from Belgian Beast who survived on very little health. Grasping Roos comes down actually on Barney Deeds with caught from three players. Now Terrador goes in for the flag and drag, but misses Jezus. He's trying to completely get him out of this fight, but in doing so, has got himself killed. He's going to be six foot under for the next 37 seconds, and this could be the moment where SK Gaming try a uh, Baron, or at least trap the Baron. With only three players on TCM, I'm not too sure they can stop this. Yeah, Jax does very well in this environment because he can get Counter-Strike on several people, but Culling comes in, trunking down the Baron, and also JWoww gets completely eliminated. 
Oh dearie me, and that is Jax is a key part of TCM's lineup. The AD carry goes down as well. It's just going to be Belgian Beast remaining. Five seconds on Barney D to respawn, but Belgian Beast has an uphill battle to climb. To say the least, he's been popped from Candy Panda and Jezis. That's going to be the Baron on top of everything else. SK Gaming explode in game number two. Yeah, that was the play that TCM needed to make, but it was very poorly executed. They were out of position. Ari was looking for the right opportunity to use the ultimate with the extra damage that would be coming in because of the debuff from Baron. But they just got picked off and Lee Sin played it perfectly, not Matraco back into the team. That's another three players down, and that's even worse. Not only did they lose the Baron, but they lost another three players, which will result in the middle tower kill and potentially Naruterador. Uh, and a Terrador, the one thing working from there is that he's tanky, so he will manage to survive, but that mid tower will be falling regardless. So now SK Gaming take the lead in terms of objectives. The tower focus in their favor. Gonna be looking maybe to push the bot lane. Candy Panda's got a big creep wave here. Must be uh, licking his lips and anticipation as he goes down to bot. The rest of his team's going to be recalling, and they've got a large amount of gold. Four players over 1.5k in their back pocket to spend. Yeah, Candy Panda just clears this one up with the culling. And TCM are in a very awkward spot because if they were going to come back into this game, much like the first game, in fact, Metas, they need to make plays. And facing up against a five man barrened up team, they can't fight. And they couldn't fight before the Baron happened either. So do they wait at turret and just get sieged in? They could potentially do that, but their wave clear is fairly weak, honestly, compared to the seeding potential, and the diving is very, very strong from SK. Freddy is so tanky right now, because he was forced to itemize armor against Jax in the top lane, he's sitting on 229 armor. So, they can easily dive these turrets. Yeah, they can. Dragon did just fall as well to SK Gaming, so gonna be looking to push down mid, maybe. Uh, 2.4k on a Candy Panda. May want to go back before this engage, because he could pick up his Bloodthirster if he so chooses. Uh, Svenskeren finds himself narrow Terrador. They both back away. It's interesting as well because a lot of Lucian players are kind of split on whether to build the Bloodthirster or the Blade of the Rune King. I would expect to see the Bloodthirster coming out here from Candy Panda, just for more burst damage. Yeah, I mean, Candy Panda doesn't have anything to fear when it comes to kiting away from anyone. I mean, if, if he was against Olaf, he might want to pick up the Blade of the Rune King. But at this stage, I mean, just picking up anything else would be absolutely fine in this scenario. As Barney D finds himself a hook onto Freddy. One, two, two, but not quite the person you want to be aggressing onto. Yep, so they are going to be keep pushing down the bot lane. I'm not too sure this engage is going to come from. Maybe TCM are going to try desperation engages. The, uh, the team of SK are split up. They've got three players and two at the top side. But now they're going to be pulling back together. This tower is taking a lot of damage though. Up down to about half of its hit points. So SK looking to try and use this Baron to its fullest extent. Yeah, SK can chunk down this tower very effectively, especially with Triforce uh, Candy Panda with the extra couple shots onto the tower when he uses an ability, and TCM just have to concede this turret. And honestly, they might just transition back up to top right now. There's a huge mini wave pushing in, or they could carry on pushing. They've got Baron. The uh, the game is their oyster, honestly, Metas. It is, and I can't see how TCM are going to hold off the invaders here because SK Gaming, they've got really good disengage. They've got awesome engage as well. Now Toto jumps in and drops them forth. It's going to take a lot of damage though for his troubles, flying down to almost zero there. Now the re-engage comes in from JWoww, he's forced to back away. And has the damage been done from SK Gaming? The only good point from TCM, I guess, is that Fountain's not that far away to heal back up again. But SK Gaming going to be going in for take number two. This tower's flying down, Strangle Thorns comes out as well. Matroko's forced to flash away as Ari picks up the first kill. Lucian takes down the tower. Now Ari will be looking to pick up the pieces here. Maybe going to clean up, in fact, going back to the spawn. Ace in the hole comes through from Caitlyn as a cataclysm used from Jarvan. Going to be flashing away as Fenskeren is giving Hot Pursuit. They need to be careful if they overextend here. SK Gaming will fall down. This is the strength of having Fountain close and the Home Guard boots. Can they land Death Sentence? No, they can't. Bonnie D's play will not be landing. Yeah, and the biggest thing to happen from here, but Freddy gets caught by Charm. Oh my lord, Belgian be so nearly died. Freddy's now could be going down. He fails his flash and the flay as well from Thresh. And that will be Matroco picking up the kill. Yeah, so 4 for 1 trade, or 4 for 2, sorry, and in the bot lane, they already picked up the turret. So, even though SK fell behind, they're at the stage in the game messes where they can just kind of just throw themselves at the tower, and it will still come out ahead. They could do the same thing mid lane or top lane, and still come out ahead in the game. And the fact that they've finally cracked the shell means that they have the bottom inhibitor to go for, 
and they could just rinse and repeat on that bottom inhib. I felt, I felt, it kind of got me in the feels there watching Freddy because he face planted against the wall <laughs> yeah. with his flash, and that's that's never a good feeling when you're playing League of Legends. As expected, Candy Panda will be picking up the Bloodthirster and also the Pickaxe. So interesting to see what that Pickaxe turns into. It could potentially be Infinity Edge. It could potentially be something a whole lot bigger as well. So we're just going to have to bide our time and wait here, Pulse. But regardless, whatever he picks up next, he is a long, long way ahead of Matroco. It's weird to say it, but even though LeBlanc hasn't completely snowballed this game, and generally you would say, well, LeBlanc is a snowball champion. If she doesn't get hurt early game, then she's going to be dead weight when it comes to mid and late. She's farming very well, and honestly, her biggest utility this game is just doing damage to Nero Terrador. The fact that he's very low on the magic resist and has only just started itemizing magic resist means that LeBlanc could just nuke him down at the start of the fight, and then he can't engage. We saw last team fight, he was already down um, so low, he had to go back to base. By the time he got back in, he only just just use his cataclysm and he offers so little damage that Kali Panda just completely ignored him. Hmm, so going in here, Pulse, like just to take stock of the situation, over 10,000 gold advantage to SK Gaming. They obviously, uh, the Baron has run out, but 1 minute 9 left on Baron Respawn. TCM, they did get a few kills, although I do feel it was a mistake from SK Gaming to stay around for that long. They got a bit too greedy. But do you think that TCM can claw this game back? Do you think they can turn this on its head? It's possible if we reach two hours in. Um, and once again, <laughs> Neuroterodol, look at that damage! Like, LeBlanc didn't even fully combo him down, and he's already lost 40% of his HP, making it even harder for him to dive back into the team fight. And you can't stop that from happening either, realistically, from TCM's perspective. Oh, with JWR being a bot lane getting farmed, they're going to get a free inhib tower off that. So now going to be engaging on top of it. So Scarin's taking the brunt of the damage Culling used from Candy Panda. But again, they get the objective and they back away. And that was just the timing play. They saw JWR at bot, so Scarin eats a charm, but he's going to be just fine. Yeah, it's just another smart rotation from SK, and that's really what their team lends itself towards. The fact that they've taken another tower at or nip. Drops so low from the burst damage from Ace in the hole. Weren't able to completely follow up on that kill. And Baron comes up in seven seconds. This could this could actually be the power play that TCM need. Yeah, SK Gaming, they don't want to take too much damage around this kind of time frame because if they're all recalling, TCM could make a timing push here on Baron. They could just rush it down while SK back at spawn. The pings are coming out. Barney D has an Oracles. So instead of going for the Baron, they're just going to take this opportunity to clear some of the, uh, the wards. Freddy122 has been caught. But with Ragnarok, he's going to get back to spawn, no problems. Yeah, they burned the Ragnarok, which is probably the best thing they could have taken from this scenario. But it's getting to the Sage metas where just rushing for Baron might have been their best play, even if they were forced into a team fight, because at least they would be going for one. Because as it is, SK just find them in rotations, chunk down one of their players, and turn it into a 4 versus 5 when they force uh, a team fight themselves. At least if they'd forced the Baron, they would have had a 5 on 5 team fight in open ground. Um, Ace in the hole comes through on Jazz. It's going to be distorting his way back to his own tower. And I would like to bring your attention and get your your two cents here on Caitlyn's build because going for Hex Drinker as fourth item is a bit of a head scratcher. I can understand why though against LeBlanc. Yeah, it's obviously up against that LeBlanc pickup. Um, it's curious though because Matroco's biggest threat this game has not been LeBlanc. And LeBlanc's biggest um, threat this game, as we've already mentioned, is making sure that Neuroterial can never engage. So it's it's a bit weird. I mean, LeBlanc's cooldowns will be up during the team fight, and that will be offered towards it. But she's got bigger threats in the form of Lucian and the rest of the AZ damage dealers, the Bruisers. At any second though, we could have an initiation, and Freddy's taking a lot of hits. So he's building for... Um, survivability as well over damage, and I'm not too sure if TCM are going to have enough damage. Yes, they've got Belgian Beast, who's on Ari, who's got a few big items there, Deathfire Grasp, Bizzle Scepter, and Void Staff, and they've got JWoww, but Matroco is the long-ranged, late-game AD carry of Caitlyn, a, a character that can stay at the back lines and crunch people down left, right, and center, and I feel taking Hexdrinker, as I'm talking, actually, Thresh will be falling there, but taking Hexdrinker goes back and, and kind of puts him in a position where he's not going to be able to trade against the likes of Candy Panda. He's not going to have the same amount of damage. To be honest, he probably wouldn't have been able to do that anyway, but now they've gone for the fight. 
They have strangled Thorns lands now. Terrador's going to be Cataclysm on top of everybody and flashing away, trying to mechanically outplay the opposition. But Jedis comes in with the Baron buff and will be crushing through, distorting back on JWoww. And again, so slippery, but JWoww is not falling for this. With the Ignite going down, we'll finally pick up that kill. It is a one for two trade though, with Candy Panda flashing up red. JWoww now finds himself in a one versus two. Dragon's raged away from Svenskeren, back towards the Wraith camp. Now Freddy's chasing, Undertow will not be landing, leap striking away. And that should be him just fine. But meanwhile though, huge minion wave comes into the top lane, which will eventually take that inhibitor as long as they keep stalling them out. And uh, it does look like JL was going to head back to base. It wasn't the worst trade that could have possibly happened, and they stopped them from taking Baron. It shows that TCM can still fight this one out, but being 10k behind, they have to continuously try and stop... Uh, to continuously try and stop them to take taking the Baron and at this stage they could just probably send one of the members from SK to go split push um, The fact that Jax is here and the fact that he's not doing that badly either means they have a duelist to try and stop that But it doesn't um, it doesn't take away from the fact that SK can just have someone try and sneak down one of the inhibs And if so as soon as one of those inhibs fall they can't realistically go for that type of fight around Baron again do you think it's going to be a case here, Pulse, that TC, uh, sorry, SK Gaming are just going to push, um, kind of split push bot and top simultaneously and try and get rid of those inhibs? Or do you think they'll group as five and just try and burst down mid? Uh, they might just group up and try and go towards Baron again, because they'll know that they can still win in these teamfights versus TCM. It's a little more dicey, but it's a lot better than um, trying to just separate and have someone die. And then TCM can just go five versus four and just head towards the Baron themselves. Hmm, so, it has to be said though, you know, you've got to tip your hat to TCM for stopping that previous Baron. Uh, really nice play from them. They did lose two players, three players in the process, but was certainly worth it because now with both teams back on the rift, back on the battlefield, that Baron is still up for grabs. And we've seen this a number of times, Pulse, that the Baron can throw a game. So if SK Gaming in the wrong, wrong place at the wrong time, as Candy Panda will be caught here, JWoww's going to be very difficult to burst away from. He's chasing down Candy Panda, who's used that flash. The rest of the team is firing up, so JWoww does not want to get too aggressive. He's managed to lure away the entirety of SK Gaming, though. Can TCM jump on top of this slight weakness? Not too sure. They're looking to just back up uh, JWoww in the jungle instead. Maybe push down this mid. Yeah, TCM um, actually playing it very smart in terms of rotation. Picking up the middle turret very, very quickly. It's getting to the stage where these inner turrets are not as valuable in terms of HP. They have been caught out by Freddy, though. They have, but they engage everything onto Olaf, who's just going to Ragnarok out of it and be fine. So all of the engage coming down from TCM, and now they have to back away. Because the, the carries of Jezz's and Candy Panda are still... 100% hit point, very, very strong, and they do not want to engage on this. Yeah, if one of these players from either of the teams drop at this stage, it could almost mean GG. I mean, SK can afford to make a mistake because of how far ahead they are, but if TCM lose a player, then they're just going to lose both those inhibs and probably an inhibitor turret as well. They're making a desperation play onto Baron. The Returnal started it up, and this might at least lure SK towards them in a less favorable team fight. Yeah, with the oracles on Barney D, there is no vision on Baron right now from SK Gaming, so they're not entirely sure as to what is going on. So Barney D's clearing these wards, they may try and trap out SK Gaming here. And if SK Gaming come down this ramp, they could find themselves getting two or three players burst down instantly. However, TCM are splitting up, JWoww has gone back to spawn, and now Barney D's recalling. It's interesting because SK are now finding problems themselves because they haven't gone for a team fight in so long. They can't really determine who will win in the team fight. And yes, they'll probably be slightly stronger when it comes to just roaming about the map and uh, getting in position faster. But TCM, the fact that they won the team fight at the bot lane, and even though they have two inhibs exposed, SK aren't confident enough that they can 5v5 fight. So they can't use those inhibitors as a catalyst for a team fight. But JWell now picking up the Guardian Angel, he might be a big factor in this next team fight coming up. He certainly will be. It's a, a big chunk of damage on TCM's side. Ace in the hole comes through. Jez is being burst down from the death by grasp. They get their pick. And now SK Gaming in a really precarious position. Again, a beautiful strangle thorns comes through. Svenskeren chases after Ari. They're going to get the return kill on the mid laners. Both mid laners are down. Candy Panda falls from Thresh. Now Terrador did a beautiful job of luring away the rest of SK Gaming towards him to pick up that free kill. But at the cost of both of their carries. And now with Niflo, with 
Freddy122 low and Svenskeren low. In fact, Nif's just fallen. They're going to be taking down the Baron. This could be the beginning of an epic comeback from TCM, who've been behind for the last 20 or 30 minutes. Caitlyn going through to try and secure this kill, flashing in to take it down, and they will get that fourth consecutive kill on their side and the Baron afterwards. And SK don't even have a chance to steal away this Baron. There's no way it's not going to go to TCM as Olaf comes in from base. This was a huge comeback victory for TCM in that last team fight. And they're hitting the stage where the team fight is just vastly superior to SK. The Honestly, their chance right now is to have them make the risky plays and try and go for these inhibs. What they still have going for them is they've done way more damage to TCM's base than TCM have done to theirs. So they can still play off the fact those inhibitors are exposed. But after taking that Baron, TCM will win any team fight they go for. We said this, Pulse, that if you allow JWoww, if you allow Jax to get into the later stages of the game, he's going to be crushing. But in that actual fight, it was all down to Belgian Beast catching Jez's out of positioning out of position, I should say, and bursting him down almost instantly. So that entire fight, Jezis was not a part. He was on the bench. He was in the death chamber. And he got to say that TCM played that fight to perfection. Pick up the uh, Baron as well. And now they're going to get big spikes in damage and come back to this with a newfound confidence. And it's not even as though they're way behind on towers. They've got both of the inner and outer towers through mid. They could just push down the mid lane and try and get this in here. Yeah, and they're starting to outscale their picks as well. Ari brings more utility, um, utility and damage into the late game than LeBlanc does. Uh, Caitlyn scales better than Lucian into late game. Fresh will just be able to peel for Caitlyn. And Jax does so, so much damage in the late game. It's unbelievable. He's basically got his core down. The two damage items into Guardian Angel. And he's still unbelievably tanky, even with this type of item build as well. So, it's getting really difficult for... Um, for SK, last team fight went really well. Yes, they managed to pick off um, LeBlanc before she was able to get her combo off. And yes, Neuroterador got a perfect ultimate where he basically locked up the entire team. And Ari still had two charges of her ultimate to lay down onto the remaining lineup of SK. So that went really well for them. But no matter how you look at this next team fight, it's going to be very difficult to eliminate all the threats from TCM right now. And going back onto a point that we raised about 5 or 10 minutes ago with the Hex Drinker on a Matroko's Caitlyn, has now got past that, has the Infinity Edge and the Hex Drinker as well. So has got to that late game uh, prowess on Caitlyn, going to be able to chunk down players if Matroko positions correctly. And it's one of his main AD carries, so you've got to assume that's going to be the case. Now you can see there is a a noticeable, a tangible change in psycho psychology going forward for these two teams. Now TCM are taking the aggressor's role. Jay Wow is going to be jumping in against Jezzes. Still takes a lot of damage though, even though he's got the GA. Doesn't have a, a massive amount of uh, magic resist, however. And Jezzes, well, he's late game LeBlanc. It's going to hurt quite a lot. He is indeed, but what's his alternatives to hit now? Jarvan has now started to itemize the magic resist, so he will still be able to engage no matter what happens. Matroka has picked up the Hex Drinker, so I'm not entirely sure LeBlanc can 100-0 him with the, uh, the standard combo of um, Q, R, and then Distortion. And TCM can just start taking down some of these outer turrets. There's very really little that SK can do right now apart from clear the minion waves. Oh my god, the charm lands on Candy Panda. That was pixel perfect. That's going to start it off again with them losing one of their key carries. And now instantly SK have to pull back. Look at Candy Panda's death chamber. 60 seconds, a full minute for SK Gaming to try and keep their team in this matchup. In the second game of this best of five, they're going to lose at least one inhib tower and the inhibitor afterwards. In fact, if they could play this correctly, TCM could finish off this but they're going to be backing away playing smart better safe than sorry and try and pick up some more objectives yeah the smart thing to do right now is probably rotate to top lane try and take some of these uh, I wouldn't say Wolves is on the highest of agendas right now, but a t uh, top tower is definitely something they could shoot for. A uh, middle was pushing in, top's pushing in, so they might just recall back to base. But after picking up Candy Panda, I'm surprised they didn't try and push further. Me too. I think it was because Nataridor was, was very low on hit points, and he is one of their, their key engagers. He wants to jump in. So, again, it's, it's probably a case that they thought, well, guys, we could try and gamble and push the Nexus Towers. We could potentially try and tank through the mid tower. But in doing so, we could very well lose two or three players needlessly. It's best to pick up the inhib, get the super minions rolling down bot lane, and then try and potentially, you know, push top. So get that double... Uh, threat kind of composition, the double pronged attack on the battlefield. Yeah, it's finding that mix between gambling and making the right decision at the right time. 
And I feel like at least they might have been able to pick up an extra turret without SK being able to respond, especially without Candy Panda. And then it would have put them in, in an even safer position where they can say, okay, now we can go back to base. And then when we go back into SK's base, we have something to go after. As it is, inhibitors already down. Realistically, they still can't go for those Nexus turrets. Top tower looks okay. And Jack started pushing up that wave. So in the next couple of minutes, that could be the objective they want to fight over. Baron is not up. So... Now it's like, can we find them in rotation, which probably isn't going to happen considering we've spoken about all this game matters, their high mobility. So it's unlikely to think they'll get another pick. So now they're in this awkward spot where, yes, we have this amazing team fight, but we're probably not going to be able to catch anyone. Just like case in point, we just saw Jezzes escape easily from Jaywell. Mm, exactly. Uh, Ethereal chains came that came down, then the distortion afterwards. So they were fine. Looks like SK could just be battling down the mid here. So that is one of the things we've not mentioned and maybe been sidetracked by the fact that TCM have been making a comeback. They still have two vulnerable, two naked in hips. Now Terrador flagging, dragging back in again. Here comes Jaywell from the backside. Does he have the damage? Does he have the disruption to make big plays? Jez is going to be his focus, but look at that mechanical play from Jez. Darting backwards, darting forwards again. And he actually avoided Jaywell, the entirety of that fight. Now you're going to have Cataclysm coming down from the job and locking down two players. Matroco from the side. That's a double kill for Matroco. In fact, it's the triple kill. Could be getting his Quadra scumbag. Jaywell steals that one away. And Svenskeren is the only player remaining for SK Gaming with just the jungler of Narrow falling down. Svenskeren will be able to get away, but look at the bot lane. Super Minions are pushing this Nexus Tower. This is going probably going to be the GG, actually, Pulse. Yeah, TCM, they just need to barrel down the mid lane and just go for their Nexus. This is their game in the barrel. This is There's no way that they can come back from this one. In fact, GG is being called by SK. That was such an exquisitely played team fight that we just saw their metas. Both of the AD carries played that so well, but Matraco was not caught by CC, whereas at the very end, we saw Candy Panda get hit by a charm, and that eventually led to their demise. That's the GG, and that goes to TCM. One to one is this best of five now. And man, oh man, is it hotting up there, Pulse. After game one, I think a lot of people watching this would have thought, wow, this is going to be a 3-0 stomp to SK because they crushed, they absolutely brutalized TCM in game one. But again, TCM coming back and showing why they are in the running for season four promotional playoffs in just a little while. So you've got to say, TCM are here to stay. They are at the very top of the EU West Challenger Series scene. Yeah, absolutely. But anyway, guys, we will jump to a quick commercial break before we jump into the third game of this best of five series between...